Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this video about Alpha Zero playing in the English opening again. Uh, this is a bit different. It's the first time we've done a video remotely. I'm afraid due to coronavirus, uh, so we, we thought it better not to get together this time. Um, actually, it's the second time we tried it, but the first time was such a disaster we couldn't <laughs> publish it. So I hope this one works out okay. Anyway, to the game. In the game, Alpha Zero plays a great strategy in the English to isolate Black's dark square bishop. And it does that by a, uh, pushing one of the pawns um, to cut off the bishop. And it's actually an idea rather similar to one played by the talented young Indian player B. Rahul. And when he was 15, he played this idea against a 2600 player the game eventually ended in a draw, but Black was in big trouble. So here, Alpha Zero is also playing white. Um, it gains space first on the queen side, then on the king side, and it looks set to suffocate Stockfish completely. Stockfish tries a desperate exchange sack, but it doesn't change its fate. Yeah, it's um, it's a really nice game, and um, actually, uh, after the game, I started uh, analysing a bit, you know, what went wrong. And uh, I actually found a nice Alpha Zero style idea that Black uh, could have tried uh, maybe early in the opening to uh, to avoid the problem. So we'll take a look at that at the uh, at the end of the video. But okay, let's uh, let's dive into the game. Right. Okay. Let's uh, get into the game then. So this is Alpha Zero with White against Stockfish with Black. So we start off with the move we love, 1c4. And Stockfish replies with 1e5, which is pretty much the move it uh, it always wants to play. Um, g3, which is uh, Alpha Zero's most common choice. And, um, um, well, a very good move order in actual fact. And after knight c6, Alpha Zero is very careful with its move order here too. Um, it plays the move... Knight c3 rather than bishop g2. Exactly. Yeah, the um, it's, it's quite an interesting one. It's uh, mentioned by um, by Mihai Marin in his uh, key book on the um, on the English opening. Um, if um, White plays Bishop G two, then Black can play this F five system, which is a um, um, actually an, a Grand Prix attack reversed. So the Grand Prix attack is uh, a one e four opening, one e four, one c five, two f four, and uh, and this is not at all bad for Black. Um, I really enjoy this one for black. I've played it lots of times. Yeah, you've played it, haven't you? It's true. Yeah, it's um, so what you actually do is you play um, uh, three knight c three to be able to meet f five with knight f three, and then uh, something like knight f six you can meet with d four, and um, well this just unsettles black's uh, um, black setup basically, and um, and white scored pretty well from um, from this opening. It has to be said. Although black isn't without uh, his chances, but knight c3 is thought to be the most accurate move order. And it's interesting that, uh, yeah, it's good to see that Alpha Zero also uh, has understood this after all its 44 million games of self-play. So, well, when the knight goes to c3, a very natural reaction is to play the bishop to b4, threatening to play bishop take c3, double up white's pawns. I mean, that's a very complicated uh, strategy still, um, but Alpha Zero doesn't seem to like it. Uh, at any rate, whenever Bishop B4 is played, Alpha Zero's reaction is always to play Knight D5. So um, Stockfish plays, quite interestingly, plays D6. Obviously, it's not really afraid of, um, of White taking the dark square bishop because, well, it was ready to exchange it anyway. Bishop to G2. And now, not the natural knight f6, but knight e7, which is uh, um, quite interesting. Just um, if knight takes e7, queen takes e7, black, um, well, black's uh, taking back with the uh, with the queen on e7 here. And it's just maybe a little bit more uh, harmonious than having the queen on f6. Um, just one thing to, uh, to, to mention is that uh, there are a few tricks here. For example, white could play bishop c6 takes and queen a4 forking the bishop and the pawn on c6, uh, which looks quite uh, quite uh, awkward, actually. But um, I think here black just plays uh, a move like rook b8. And after queen takes c6, probably even bishop d7 is uh, 
is good for black and uh, well for the sacrifice pawn even if it becomes two or three pawns you've got a a lot of development and a lot of compensation that's not alpha zero style as white um actually alpha zero's uh, very common reaction in these positions is to put the knight to f3 i mean there are a lot of systems where white plays e3 and knight e2 but uh, alpha zero's almost always playing knight f3 so here stockfish plays bishop c5 yeah, I mean, it, um, um, it's offered the exchange of bishops. White hasn't taken it, and that bishop is kind of hanging a bit loose on b4. So um, Stockfish brings it back into, um, into, uh, into the position. Castles, and now knight takes d5, e takes d5, knight d4. And after knight takes d4, then Stockfish takes an important decision here. Here, Stockfish takes with the bishop this time. In a previous video, we've looked at where Stockfish takes with the pawn, um, and now we'll see Alpha Zero's approach when it takes with the bishop. So Black can actually capture with the pawn on d4, um, which opens up the e-file and uh, an attack on the pawn on e2. But uh, taking with a bishop on d4 is, is very, very reasonable. It keeps Black's uh, pawn chain very nice and fluid and... Uh, and good. I think I mentioned it in a, in a previous video that, um, uh, you know, I spent some time looking at these positions and um, I was always a little bit afraid from the white point of view that the exchange of knights would really flatten out the um, uh, the white position. You know, with, without knights in, uh, on, on the board, you've got a lot less, uh, a lot fewer options uh, for counterplay. I mean, you really start to, to notice that you're missing something. But, um, but actually both these games and also uh, a fantastic game um, of uh, Magnus Carlsen's against uh, Anish Giri at Shamkir in uh, 2019, I think it was. I mean, really convinced me. I mean, that was a great Alpha Zero style game, that, uh, that game of Magnus's. And that really convinced me that there's a lot of life left in these uh, positions. I find it interesting that in both this game and the other Alpha Zero game that we looked at, that that dark square bishop becomes awkward. So whether taking with the bishop or taking with the pawn, still that 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 bishop caused a bit of trouble for black. Yeah, it's um, it, it's strange. It's it's uh, we're seeing so many games where um, I think we've uh, we've seen three games now. This is the third game where um, uh, that dark square bishop gets into trouble. I mean, on one on the first game we saw it ended up on a seven um, out of play. Then it then we saw another game where it went to a five and ended up out of play. And now Alpha Zero is going to be able to uh, to keep it um, out of play on the b6 square. And it does it actually entirely through pawn structure. So the first move is obvious, e3, chasing the bishop away, forcing it back to, uh, to b6. Um, but the next couple of moves, actually two, three moves, are really, really good. Um, and actually this is the same plan that... Um, the uh, the young Indian player that Natasha mentioned in the introduction, the same plan that he played as well. So excellent strategy there. So played f4 and here uh, Stockfish castled. And now, I mean, I was mainly looking actually um, at plans with f5 and trying to build up a big kingside pawn mass, but it never really looked, well, as dangerous as I would have wanted it to be, if you see what I mean. Um, but Alpha Zero plays something completely different. It plays... Uh, F takes E5, D takes E5, and now a very important move here, B2 to B4. Now, what's the point of this move? Well, if you're looking at uh, the black position, um, if you just gave black one free move, black would play the move Bishop C5 and bring that bishop back to D6. I mean, it defends C7 as well, but then it also defends the E5 pawn and also looks along the uh, the b8 h2 diagonal towards the white king so with b4 um alpha zero is uh, keeping that bishop tied down to b6 and not letting it get active and well you start realizing that that bishop's well it's going to find it hard to move from b6 i mean it's uh, you know biting on granite against the pawn on e3 because white's going to leave that pawn on d2 um and it's not going to get anywhere through c5 and something like c7 to c6 is difficult to achieve whilst um, uh, you know, white's got a bishop on g2 and pawn on d5. So not an easy uh, situation for black. Um, I think, you know, yeah, I mean, I was looking uh, in this position already at ideas like uh, just playing c6, actually, and uh, just trying to sacrifice a pawn and, uh, and open up the centre. Although, yeah, my engine's uh, um, 
tended to make like life difficult for me when I did that. But um, something like that felt right. Um, I think what Stockfish does here is uh, just stay a little bit on the um, on the solid and passive side, and um, well, Alpha Zero manages to take a, a full advantage of that. So Queen E7, Queen B3, A5, and now a very nice move as well from Alpha Zero, Bishop A3. That bishop cuts right across the uh, um, the queen and rook on the a3, e7 diagonal. And, um, well, I mean, uh, uh, Stockfish plays a4, queen c3 and rook d8, just to get its pieces out of the way. But, yeah, I mean, after after b5, then um, uh, queen e8, well, you can see already that black's pieces are looking a little bit odd. Um, black's never going to be able to get the move c6 and... no i mean really white's clamped down on that break so that bishop is uh remaining on b6 you know for forever really until white decides that he maybe even wants to exchange it with uh with bishop c5 just to weaken the uh the c7 square that it's defending so alpha zero keeps control just uh defends its uh its stuff and now yeah alpha zero has to decide on on another plan and um uh well, it's gained a lot of space on the uh, on the queen side, so now it starts looking on the king side and saying, "Well, how can I gain space?" And well, that that proves to be not too difficult actually. Um, first of all, a good you might be able to guess this move. A good sensible uh, a good sensible move, rook f two, and now this move g four. Yeah, and if uh, white is left to its own devices, it's now going to put the bishop onto e four and then put the rooks on the f and g files and then get in the pawn break to g4 to g5 yeah i mean it's a very simple plan and um and if you look at um you know what if you try and think you know what can black do it's very very hard for black to um to make any inroads on the uh, on the white position white's position is just really really solid so um but of course it wouldn't be stockfish if uh, you know if uh, if um if there weren't tactics that it discovered so king h8 just getting out of uh, any moves like d5 to d6 a lovely consolidating move h3 preparing bishop e4 and now uh, stockfish starts fishing a little bit <laughs> quite uh, no pun intended um just um attacking things attacking points and hoping to overload white somehow actually um alpha zero uh, just happily uh, gives away a pawn uh, now. So plays this move bishop b4, obviously trying to exchange off the dark squared bishop because then c7 will be very weak. Stockfish plays queen g6, bishop e4, and then we've got this move bishop b5, picking up a pawn. It's all happening. Yeah, if queen takes b5, queen e4. I mean, has alpha zero missed something? Um, well, no, of course not, actually. It, um, it plays queen c2, and after queen f7, well, you see those bishops on b5 and a5 are a little bit loose, but actually alpha zero has just gained a couple of tempi to uh, to get the activity that it wanted, and it comes straight in with g5. And this is just a very awkward position for black. I mean, um, um, white's threatening. Actually, you can take on h7. Um, a move like g6 could uh, come in as well. And um, obviously, um, there might even be some little tricks with bishop a5 and then a, a loose bishop on b5 somewhere. So it's a very difficult position for black. Um, so here Stockfish um, takes a rather radical decision. It plays the move uh, bishop b4, rook b4 and rook d5. Uh, takes, Sacrificing the exchange. Exactly. And queen takes here. And sometimes, you know, these exchange sacrifices, you know, they really work. I mean, uh, they really, uh, um, you destroy some of uh, the opponent's best pieces and um, gain a lot of freedom for yourself uh, and gain, you know, some pawns in compensation. But here, unfortunately, Black's position is just too loose. And, uh, well, Alpha Zero has absolutely no trouble in uh, converting this, even though, you know, Stockfish always defends these positions well. But... Um, so actually, what, Al what Alpha Zero is uh, doing here is just trying to um, um, exchange off the uh, uh, the rooks. After which, there's really no hope whatsoever. I mean, uh, Stockfish has to give away that pawn, and then Alpha Zero is going to bring its king in. So Stockfish resigned. So I thought that was a really nice game, actually. I especially love that always these ideas when. Uh, when Stockfish seems to get control of the whole board and alternate play on um, on each wing. Um, but just interested to see, you know, where did it all go wrong then? 
you know, because often with these games, you know, you see how Alpha Zero plays and you just, uh, it looks so natural and smooth. You sort of feel like it's a, a force win for wide. Well, I mean, I guess there are, you know, a few different uh, um, places to improve. But I really, you know, I really do feel that um, that this was the moment where um, there was maybe a chance to radically change the uh, the course of the game. And um, well, if you're a if you're a real game changer, if you've been uh, reading our book and following our videos, then um, you might well be able to guess the move I want to play here with Black. So instead of Stockfish's move, which was castles, Alpha Zero plays a classic Alpha Zero move, which is eleven h five. Yeah, I don't actually know whether Alpha Zero would play it, but I think, uh, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it did. I mean, what, what, what's the point of this move? Well, um, you know, as we saw in the game, um, with a benefit of hindsight, you know, White's going to gain space on both um, the Queen side and the King side. So stopping it on the Queen side isn't that easy. But with h5, we're definitely stopping white from gaining space on the king side. You know, the queen isn't going to come to h5, for example. And, we, we, you know, we're teeing up play like uh, h5 to h4. We get g4 for the bishop. And against a move like um, h3, for example, to meet uh, h4 with g4. Um, well, I could even play the move. Um, um, I had a couple of crazy ideas. I mean, even g5 um, appealed to me somehow. But um, maybe f5 is the most sensible. Um, just preparing then to play h4, you know, which will then open up the uh, the white king side a little bit. I mean, it's um, it's very very unclear, you know, but it's a sharp position, and I really had the feeling that uh, at least black was 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 making white think and making white uh, look for uh, for non-standard solutions, because in the game, you know, what Alpha Zero managed to do was uh, was just so so smooth and so easy. You know, it, um, it 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 did almost feel like um, like a forced uh, a forced win for White. So there we are. I mean, I hope you've uh, enjoyed that game. I found it very very instructive, and uh, certainly I think you know from these Alpha Zero games, I've learned a lot about uh, you know the the richness and the uh, the breadth of ideas that there still are even with both sets of knights exchanged. Um, so um, I mean, just the standard call to action then, if you haven't subscribed to our channel. And remember to subscribe. Exactly. And uh, if you haven't bought Game Changer, then it's... You will enjoy it. It's a good, probably the best moment ever to buy Game Changer because, well, with all the coronavirus stuff, maybe there's plenty of time for uh, for a lot of reading. So um, anyway, keep well, keep safe and keep on following our channel because we've got um, quite a few additional thrilling games in the English and in other things as well coming up. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much indeed.